Welcome to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the nozzle ADXL mount from Provoke 3D. I'm very excited to use this mount. It's great for input shaping. If you're not familiar with input shaping and you wonder what it does and why you need it, it's basically an algorithm that is set up in Clipper, software-based, that allows you to identify the resonances or the vibrations in your printer, and then it counters those with a command in Clipper, basically, that's transparent to you while you're printing. This ADXL 345 toolboard is going to allow you to identify, through a test, what those vibrations are, and then it will provide you after the test with some recommendations for your printer configuration file that you can set up to counter those resonances. What that really means in layman's terms is that your print's going to look better. You're not going to have ghosting or ringing showing up. Now I am going to be running this on a Voron Zero, but the reality is the Voron Zero probably doesn't even need input shaping enabled unless you're printing really fast. You are going to find a lot more benefit of input shaper running on larger machines like my Voron 2.4 or my Trident. And this will work on any non-Voron machine as well. A nozzle-mounted accelerometer board like this one is one of the best places that you can check input shaping. And the reason for that is that's where your nozzle is. That's the closest thing that's going to be printing. This printer that I have here actually has an ADXL 345 accelerometer, the same as this, that's built into the tool head. However, the challenge with that is that the tool head sits behind the, you know, the print head and it's way above the center of gravity. So the vibrations that we may detect here are going to be probably a little bit different than what we find where the nozzle is. So the reality is, with any printer, you're most likely going to get a better input shaper value uh, using a nozzle mounted uh, toolboard like this one. Now I'm going to walk you through how to set up the nozzle mount on your printer. And after I go through the hardware setup, then I will also walk you through the software setup. First up, I'm going to go ahead and preheat my tool head here. And I've got TPU loaded, so I'll go ahead and get that going. Now that I've homed it, I'm going to go ahead and move it down. I'm going to just move it pretty much the max, all the way to the bottom. I went ahead and unloaded my filament. Now I've got my ratchet here, and I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the, the tool head here. And in my case, I'm using a 7 millimeter socket. And I do have a dragon tool head. I don't need to, to hold it with a wrench. It's a one-handed turn. Now, if you have a tool head that requires, you know, that does require a wrench, you're going to want to use that and be very careful. I've got the nozzle removed, so now I'm going to go ahead and cool. I don't want to do anything with the nozzle board until this is cooled down quite a bit. Once your hot end fan turns off or you hit 50C or below, now you can go ahead and install this. This needs to be mounted like this, where the USB is on the bottom, and the nozzle goes like this. I'm going to take my socket, kind of get this set, and then I'm just going to come under here and then go ahead and tighten it. You don't want to over tighten it, but you do want it snug because you don't want anything moving around there when you run the test. This board should not be able to move very easily if you touch it. That's how you know you've got it on well. And here's a close up view of how it should look when you have it mounted. Now, you're going to take your USB-C cable and you're going to plug it into this end of the nozzle mount. Again, it should not be moving around on you. So once you have that done, and after you've got that plugged into the board, you're simply going to take the other end of the cable and plug it into your Raspberry Pi. Now if you mounted your Raspberry Pi like I did on mine, you should be able to take your cable, lay your printer on the side, and just sneak it up through here and push it in. And it should plug in just like that. And now you can just run your cable under your printer. So that's all there is to it from the hardware perspective. Once you get all that done, then it's time to configure the software. Now that you've got everything plugged in, go ahead and power up. You should notice some lights, some LED lights coming on on the board here like that. There's a red one and a green one. If you don't see that, double check your USB connection. And now that we've got everything plugged in, we're pretty much ready to go. You do not want to preheat your nozzle. Just leave it cold. We're going to be running this test cold. This nozzle board does come with firmware preloaded to it, which is great, it saves you a lot of steps, but you are still going to have to prepare your Raspberry Pi or equivalent, some Python packages and whatnot that you're gonna to have to include in order to get the graphs generated and the input shaper uh, algorithm to run. I'm going to go ahead and SSH into my Pi and begin installing the packages that are required in order to run the input shaping. 
These are all outlined on the Clipper website and I will have the link in my description. First thing you want to do is run the sudo apt update and that's going to bring down all the latest bits. You're going to need to install the Python 3 NumPy package along with matplotlib. That's what's going to help us generate the packages. And make sure you type it in properly or just copy and paste it. I had a typo in here. It is going to take a little bit of time to install the Python libraries that you need. But just wait for it. It should finish up. This is running on a Raspberry Pi 3 equivalent, uh, Pi 02W. So it did take a little bit of time. Next up, you're going to go into mainsail or fluid and upload input shaper.cfg. This is what I'm using. And we're going to then include that in the printer.cfg file. And you want to add this include input shaper.cfg line that I'm showing here. And make sure that you save and restart after you do this. Now you can check to see if everything was successful simply by going to the console and then running your accelerometer query command that I show here. And you should get something similar to my output. And at this point, you want to go ahead and home your machine. You're going to need to home before you can run the accelerometer test. And everything should be able to home just fine with the USB plugged in. So don't worry too much about that. Okay, now that everything's home, we're going to go ahead and run the command. Once homing is complete, you want to go back to the console command and type in test underscore resonances access equals x. And what this is going to do is it will start the whole process. So you can see the tool head's going to move to position, and then we're going to start seeing some vibrations. And this is as expected. It's going to go through all the way up to, I believe, 150 hertz or so. And at some point, you're not going to be able to visibly see what, those, uh, what the vibrations are doing to the tool head, and that's perfectly fine. This is going to go on for a bit. It may take a few minutes. And once it's done, we're going to check what it shows on the console. And there will also be a file generated that we can take a look at. The test is now complete, and I've got my file. I'm going to go ahead and go to my temp directory, and I'll just show the contents of that file, which is what you see here. In order to make sense of these results, I need to run this Calibrate Shaper Python script. And you can see that I pasted that in here and now it's coming back with the results. And it's also generating a PNG file that I can then view graphically. Now after I run the X, I'm also going to run the Y, and not shown here is me going back to the console and running test resonances Y. And then after that, I'm going to get a very similar CSV file, which I can then run my commands to. One of the things that I like to do is I like to copy the PNG files from the temp directory into my Clipper home directory. That just makes it easier for me to grab them and keep them in one place. Now one of the things that I do, I'm on a Mac so I can use the SCP command, which basically allows me to copy those files that I just created from my Raspberry Pi directly to my Mac. Um, you can use other programs to do this, but all you're really trying to do is get your PNG files from the Raspberry Pi to your local machine so you can view them. And here you can see the results of my input shaper test for X. I think that actually looks like a pretty good graph. And similarly, the Y looks pretty good. There's a peak in the center. It's a little bit of an art to read these input shaper graphs. You don't want to see two humps. You don't want to see things spread out. You don't want to see double humps. If you do happen to see that kind of stuff and not smooth large humps like you see in mine, you might have other issues. And I encourage you to check out the Clipper documentation on that. And next up, you're going to need to make sure you have an input shaper section in your printer.cfg file. And go ahead and add these shaper underscore freak underscore x and y values. We're going to go ahead and populate the values based on what we found in the input shaper results. And at this point, I've already populated x, and now I'm changing y, and I'm going to go with the 72.6 recommendation. While you're in here, go ahead and update the max acceleration of your printer, which is under the printer configuration se section. The input shaper results recommend a max excel of either 15.5 or 17.7. So I'm going to go ahead and go with a little bit lower value of 15,000, which is still very good. Go ahead and save and restart. Now your input shaper settings should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and conduct a quick and dirty test of the input shaper values that I've applied. And I'm going to use a ringing tower that's about 70 millimeters. And this is very similar to what you'll find on the Clipper site. 
and it's typically used for manual input shaper testing, but it, it also works great to confirm that your settings are dialed in. So I've got that here, and it's only about a 10 millimeter tall print, so I can do this pretty quickly. You can see the settings are going pretty good here. I would also recommend that you print this probably like you normally would in terms of speeds. So this one here is around maybe 150 to 200 millimeters per second for overall print speed, which is what I like to print at. But some folks are gonna to wanna to go faster and that's perfectly fine. The print has finished up, so we're gonna go ahead and take a look. So as I look at this print, I do not see any ghosting whatsoever anywhere. So I would say this is definitely a success. Once you get your machine pretty much uh, tightened up and ready to go, you should be able to achieve similar results or maybe even better than what I've shown in the video. It's definitely worth it. You're going to, you're, you're not gonna really see any ghost scene on your printer, even going with 10, 15K accelerations. You're gonna be able to print pretty darn fast. Most likely, the cooling is gonna be the limitation. Um, I do happen to have some cooling fans that helps with that as well. And, and at that point, then your flow might end up being your bottleneck in terms of pushing your printer even faster. The reality is, unless you're doing speed benchies, uh, this is going to be really good for the intended purpose of a Voron Zero, which in my opinion is a bootstrap printer uh, for other Voron machines, printing ABS quickly, and also just for printing prototype parts, things that you're experimenting and trying to build and iterate over. I hope you've enjoyed this quick video on the Provoke 3D nozzle board. I found that it was really easy to get up and running. It's great that it has the software pre-compiled and you don't really have to do anything. With the board itself, you can just get up and running and go. I also like that this is one of the most accurate ways you can measure resonances on a printer. It's right where you're going to be printing, so this makes a lot of sense. It seems to be way more accurate than the ADXL 345 in my CAN bus tool head. For the price that this board goes for, you really can't go wrong. Check some local sites. I know you can get it from Boxy Prints or Provoke 3D, and I'll have the link down in my description. Go ahead and get this board if you want to get some really good input shaping results. I am going to be testing this on other hot end setups. I believe it works fine with the Revo. Um, it may be a little more challenging to tighten it down, but um, I know Nero recently had a, a video where he installed and used it, so I, I think it's fine. And I, I really don't think there's too many hot ends this wouldn't work on. As long as you've got space in between the nozzle and the, the hot end where you can tighten it down, you should be good to go. If you give this a shot, let me know and leave a comment. As always, thanks for watching Greg's Maker Corner.